You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Let's now dissect today's papers, shall we, with our studio in the guest and economist, Bolaho Olojede. Good morning, Sam. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Nice to be here. All day. right. Let's begin with the Daily Independence newspaper. The big story here says insecurity may lead to ethno-religious war, and that's according to the Senate. It says... Herders, farmers' clashes may cause food insecurity. Ask Buhari to rejig nation's security architecture. And Lawan here saying emergence of inter-ethnic conflicts worrisome. This one here says WTO to ratify Okonjo Iweala's appointment as Director General on February 15th. Biden asked American diplomats to push for homosexual rights in host countries. Open grazing no longer sustainable, according to northern governors. UK government here say Nigeria to receive 16 million free doses of COVID-19 vaccines and Kakavid to buy $100 million vaccines for Nigeria, clarifies BUA's commitments. We also see these other stories here on the front page of the Daily Independent. This one saying insurance loses over 6 trillion naira to non-enforcement of compulsory covers. And presidency rejects Fanny Kaede's planned move to APC. Bandits kill 23 persons in Kaduna, and FG advances 360 billion naira budget support to state. There's so many stories on the front page of the Daily Independent, and I know you would love to talk about this one, about Biden asking American diplomats <laughs> to push for homosexual rights in those countries. Well, why did you think I would like to talk about mm, that? Great way to start. A, a, anyway, um, I, I think the way it's been presented by Nigerian followers of American politics is as if this is new. No, it is not. Richard Grenell was the man spearheading this under the Trump administration. In fact, Richard Grenell was the first openly gay man to be appointed to a cabinet position in America, and he was appointed by Trump. And he went out there and said, all countries that have criminalized LGBT affairs will face sanctions. So it's a continuum. For us as Nigeria, I think what should bother us is, why are we really affected? Because we are beggars. So we go all the way to everybody and start begging for it. So when they say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to give you that money because you did not support uh, LGBTs, then we start worrying it. Let's fix our own country, make it what we want it to be, and be able to call the bluff of anybody, wherever you are, that thinks that we should take up your policy. Why should we adopt your policy? We have our own cultural differences. Religious as well. Religious differences as well, though we're also living in denial. Absolutely, and then that's yes, where, where I think true. you should also quickly chip in on. You know, So how, how much longer are we going to continue to live in that denial? I, I think we have gotten to a point where we need to talk about it and talk about it frankly. As much as we like to pretend as if there are no LGBT issues going on there, we know it is prevalent. And it has been here for centuries. It is not new. You know? So what we have not been able to do, or what I think we may not want to do by virtue of cultural issues, is that we may not want to bring it mainstream. Um, you know, mainstream will mean openly joining gay people and all, and all those kind of things. But for us to continue to deny that there are gays in our midst or that things like that are, are going on and that we should talk about it is, is, is living in But I don't denial. think anyone can deny that. I mean, social media is awash. Awash with all with those the people who so, are openly gay. gay. So if you have the, that level of prevalence, why are we hiding about it? So do you, don't you think we should slowly get to a place where it is somehow, somewhere um, okay and accepted amongst our, you know, ourselves? Um, in, you know, instead of continuing to you know, hold on to religion and culture and some of all those things that have um, those, made it difficult. Those are, those are very tough discussions to have. But incidentally, that is why I believe we have representatives of the people who are gathered somewhere called the National Assembly. Um, it is about that time when we look at, at these things more critically. Saying you want to put somebody in jail for being gay, jailing for 14 years, is, is, is something we must talk about. All right. Indeed. Do we now turn to other issues of security in the country? Open people. grazing, no longer sustainable. Northern governors saying this, and uh, insecurity may lead to ethno-religious war. That's uh, uh, according to the Senate. 
It, it, it should go beyond declaration. What, what I heard from the, the president or the chairman of the Northern State Governors yesterday was that they were declaring that uh, open grazing is not acceptable, uh, it's old-fashioned. It goes beyond declaration. What exactly do you plan to do about it? And it is not just open grazing. Don't let's kid ourselves about that. Because if you look at, let me bring up one other issue. How about cattle movement? As long, if, if you say no more open grazing, but there is still cattle movement from north to the south, do you think that no open grazing will hold? If I'm moving my cattle from Kano to Lagos, and you say no open grazing, where are my gardens along that pathway where, where my cattle will graze? So we have to take this thing in entirety and address it. The part that we're not also paying attention to is the economics of it. There is an, a huge economics around it, which makes it, uh, um, which, which, which will not make it happen naturally. So you're not going to have the current investors just go and start doing ranching. Well, maybe ranching is, is not exactly the right words to use because a ranch in itself is an extensive place and the average cattle person cannot, Afford technically them. speaking, do a ranch. But you can have an enclosure uh, where you provide the same kind of, uh, similar kind of service so that they don't roam around all over the whole place. So the economics of it will tell you that, look, I will not, if I'm a herder, I will not naturally go and herd my, I mean, I will not go and ranch my cattle because it is cost for me. I might still be paying that cost for the next 10 years. So it reduces my profitability. So there must be some other actions that drive it, either legal, so you want to enforce the existing laws, but laws alone cannot do it. There has to be more investment and support in that space by government in itself. So we have Smedan for small and business, small, small and medium scale. We have RSS fund, we have agricultural support fund, all sort of fund have been made available in other sectors. There is nothing wrong in looking at this particular sector and see how we can support and drive and change the attitude of the headers towards where we want them to go. All right, let's move to the nation newspapers this morning. Some of them have already come up on a daily independent, but um the big one there says uh, northern or north governors declare open grazing outdated. We just spoke about that. Rival groups threaten protest at Lekki Tollgate. Uh, BUA and Kakovit clash over plan to buy $345 million vaccines. The vice president, Oshimbajo, registers for APC in Ogun State. And um, also uh, this morning, a minister hints at likely petrol price increase. Bandits kill 23 in uh, Kaduna attacks. And uh, this one also here is on the nation says, Kano Maradi rail line would serve over 80 million Nigerians, says uh, President Buhari. Uh, we can also see on the nation this morning, uh, 10 billion IR fraud charge slammed on Stella Odua's and a firm, and also nine shops burnt in Kwara. So we can quickly go through two of these stories. Um, which one will you your, your choice. Bandits, uh, once again, or, uh, of course, the petrol price increase, and, uh, or maybe even car COVID and 345. Okay, uh, the, the, the petrol price uh, increase. Uh, my position has consistently be the need for government to be more transparent. Government is struggling. It's struggling to tell and convince Nigerians that there is a need to increase the prices. You see, as the price of crude in the international market is going up, the, 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 the price of the local refined product will also go up. This is the removal of subsidy that we are talking about. But that template, we have to put out more information out there. As an ordinary citizen who is interested in, in that segment, for example, I want to be able to know that this is likely to be what my petrol price will be by virtue of what I'm already seeing that. Oh, Oil has gone from 50 to 51 to 55 to 56, it's inching on 60. I know that very soon it, it will happen. But what are the things that go into that thing? Why are we shrouding everything in secrecy? Why is equalization still there? There are so many questions that Nigerians, uh, uh, that bothers Nigerians mind. It is time that government get more transparent, provide those information, and reduce the tension. All right. And uh, another 23 Nigerians killed in uh, Kaduna. Uh, that was barely 48 hours after, I think, about 19 were killed. Uh, this is serious insecurity issues. Um, 
I was, I've been even been asking myself, because there seems to be a bit of an escalation after the new uh, service chiefs were appointed. Uh, is he a show of force on the part of the bandit and the insurgents as well? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. As far as the people that are affected is concerned, they just want to be able to live and pursue their own happiness. So it's back on the, on, 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 on the desk of the chief, uh, the, the chief CNC to do something about getting out. And then this story here, BUA car COVID clash over plan to buy $3.45 million vaccine. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, car COVID is saying that only the federal government has the rights to buy vaccines, but why is saying that they are going to go ahead and they've paid for one million doses? I don't know what you think about this. I, I, I think it may not be, uh, it may be more than meets the eyes. I, I'm, I'm hoping that this is not a personality clash. It seems so. Between Boa says, two uh, wealthy Nigerians. Who Boa are, has actually who are said that a prominent member of Kakovid is against the fact or unhappy. I don't know how true these allegations are. So there's Dangote on one side, there's Abdul Samad on the other side. Boa, Dangote group. I hope those are not big. But at the end of the day. But what, what exactly should be the bone of contention here? Who buys it or, or who, who. Maybe who takes the shine? Who takes the who, credit? Who takes, the, who takes the shine, you know. Uh, so, w whatever the case is, um, what is important is the lives of Nigerians. And that is what Nigerians will appreciate them for. Whatever those internal problems are, it is better they solve it internally and not make it a newspaper fight in which they are issuing press uh, uh, releases yes, and, yes. And, and all of that. Just help us and get these vaccines. They are doing a bit and we appreciate what they are doing. But I'm hoping that we will not allow politics to derail the good work that COVID uh, has been doing thus far. True. All right. Do we now turn Moving to um, the Nigerian Tribune? Uh, Osimbajo here is saying we must prosecute bandits and kidnappers to show justice. And the details here says once community policing strengthened and he revalidates his uh, APC membership in Ikene, Oshomale faults APC membership revalidation exercise. This is a big one. Buhari flags off work on Kano Maradi $1.96 billion standard gauge rail line. And he says projects will increase revenue. And the WTO decides on Okonja Wela February 15th, Kakovit to buy vaccines through FG Plants Distribution. This one says, or your lawmakers recount experiences with kidnappers, herders, and hoodlums. Uh, we also see that story here on uh, the U.S. policy on uh, homosexuality, saying Biden pushes for gay rights, threatens Nigeria, others with financial and visa sanctions. And UIVC appointment, again, FG suspends governing council meeting indefinitely. And this continued APC campaign that we've been seeing on the front pages of the newspapers since Monday. Oh, some of them, except the punch. Anyway. Um, let's get into it. There's also the Obaseki creates grazing uh, areas for heads, man. Um, the, you know, as maybe a solution to you know, some of the that, issues that, that we're that, facing. That is part of the intervention that mm. I was talking about. These headsmen are there. If you just say no open grazing, everybody should go around. It will not naturally happen. Government has to intervene both by virtue of the law and the enforcement of those laws as well as some sort of financing and other support that could be provided to ensure that it will happen. Um, uh, but we, we, we don't have these same conversations, you know, for other business owners and for other, you know, farmers. Who says? Uh, do, do we, I don't know, remember any time a government is talking about creating areas for um, millet farmers or for, for corn farmers if or you, If like you that. actually want farmland, for millet farming in Nigeria today, you can get it free from certain government. You only need to know who to speak with. Free. They will give you, oh, you want to do this many hectares? You will get the land. Government had consistently invested in agriculture for over a decade. Huge amount of money in billions. And it wasn't because, uh, and it was at, you know, 4%, all those of, why? Because government is driving a policy in that direction. And it wants to be able to encourage people to go into agriculture. So it is not new what we're talking about. They've done the same in other segments, in healthcare, even aviation. People got free money to fly their own aircraft. Absolutely. All right. You know.
you want to talk about this uh, President Buhari performing groundbreaking ceremony of the, you know, this this? Yeah, it, it, yes. it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, bit, but it, it appears we're going ahead with that. If you ask me on the face of it, I would have thought there might be um, projects that should rank higher in priorities. This is uh, what I'm getting at. Is not that this project is not good. This project is good because it will stimulate trade. He's saying over 80 million Nigerians will benefit from the project. Uh, I don't know. We like to draw around figures. I don't even know where those 80 million are coming from. But the reality is that that center, look at Kano, for example, has been a, a, a commercial hub for trans Sahara trade for centuries, no bit today. You know, so if we're able to move goods out of Nigeria and, and back, um, it will stimulate trade. People will get more into the field and plant if it is agricultural product we are shipping. It might encourage certain value add, so production. And, so it, it, it is a good project. But somebody might say, how about Kano Lagos? Now, what is the population of DJ in itself? And we have 20 million consumers in Lagos as well. So uh, it's neither here nor there. But on its own, standing on its own, is a good project. And it is also important for Southerners to know that the stability of the North is important for their own security. So even if it is out of what you call enlightened self-interest, that project is also important. Mm. Um, well, well. Uh, well, well, you, you, you can also bring in, you know, <laughs> I was also going to bring in, you know, the, you know, deficiencies in the southeast with regards, you know, movement of goods. Um, there's a large, you know, market, you know, all over the southeast, you know, and there's not that, there's not, you know, enough of those facilities that are available to move goods from the southeast to Lagos and to the north. I, I, um, I, I know those perfectly are... agree with you. Though it is agreeable that uh, a, a whole lot of those products are imported, they are trade-related products. But at the same time, if you provide the right level of transportation, there, you may also stimulate local production, production yes. Absolutely. to move it. So that's what I'm saying. On the priority side, I am not sure if this should rank topmost on the priority. But as a standalone project, it's, 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 it's laudable. Yeah. Um, all right. And um, of course, uh, your point on stability of the North being important for, um, for of course, for the, the South, South and for, yes. for the rest of the you know, nation. I, I, I would say it's still you know, a government responsibility to ensure um, the safety of Nigerians in the South regardless. And you, know, you, could, you cannot continue to babysit people because, well, you don't you know, <laughs> want to break out I, of I, 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 I understand perfectly what you're saying. But, you know, that, that stability part is, is, is a balancing act. And, and you have to be careful how you do it as a government. As, as a matter of fact, in public policy, you do the public policy not because you satisfy everybody. Even if you give us electricity today, do you know there are businesses that you will kill by virtue of giving us electricity? <laughs> True. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yes. Do we now uh, want to quickly touch on the, a few stories here on the sun? We saw this one on the last paper we looked at, but let's uh, maybe talk about it in detail. Lekki Tollgate, we're seeing that uh. youths are moving to... <clears throat> plan a counter uh, protest to the Occupy Lagos protest. They've called you Defend Lagos. We discussed this yesterday, but I don't know what your thoughts are on this because the APC is now accusing a former spokesman of anarchy over supports for the protests. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think the former spokesman, you know, there, there is this issue of uh, being led by celebrities. And I've asked people, how many celebrities died at Lekki on October 20? Did, did we go the poor onto their the poor and voiceless onto their death by unnecessary extension of that problem, which has not been resolved right now. But that is not the issue. The issue for me is why have we suddenly decided that the best way to resolve our issues is on the streets? Can't people sit down and resolve issues? There is a committee by legal states. Nine people, five people on one side, four people on the other side. There is uh, the NSAS people. There is also the uh, um, LCC people. Who says those people cannot sit down and resolve these matters in a room? Why must it be on the street? But, but do you recall that the, why this protest is taking place in the first place is because of what happened at the Lagos panel? I understand. I, I, watched, I watched the event live with five people on one side and four people coming back later to, to give their own. We have to be careful how we approach this. Why we must ensure that that fundamental right for people to have a peaceful protest is guaranteed. And government has a duty in that. 
So the same police that we're talking about must ensure that if there is a peaceful protest, it remains peaceful and people do not get uh, hurt, hurt by virtue of uh, uh, peaceful protest. But at the same time, we are now beginning to hear counter protest. So there is a cocktail that is brewing there and it has the potential to degenerate into violence. Will this solve the problem? I doubt, because at the end of the day, we must also ask ourselves, what exactly is the goal? If the goal is to resolve this LCC returning to uh, uh, the, I believe it can be solved in a room. Well, um, I'm sure, you know, these uh, protesters on both sides have already understood what, you know, it feels like to negotiate with the Nigerian government um, over time. And, you know, that's, you know, initially the reason for the protest in the first place. You wouldn't have started if uh, there were successful negotiations in the past or there were, you know, successful um, um, uh, 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 statements, you know, and moves by the government to in response to the cries of the people. So um, we hope, like you said, it doesn't result in violence. And um, we, we hope and, so. And, and we hope that. so. All right. That's um, most of what we are taking this morning on uh, Off the Press. Stay with us. Thank you very much to Ms. Abuela for, um, for stepping in. Um, we're telling you what happened today in history right after the short break.